Hello and welcome to Triple C Rated, the podcast or food podcast from me, Chin, my mum, Chu, and my wife, Lydia. Me and mum have our own YouTube channel called Jang's Food Workshop with 150,000 subscribers on, TikTok with 100,000, and so on and so on. So we just thought we'd start this podcast up where we talk about food, uh, our industry, which is um, East and South Asian, Asian, Southeast Asian uh, cuisine, specifically restaurants and being chefs. So yeah, if you like that kind of thing, make sure you subscribe to the, the podcast. Yeah, that's right. Subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. What did you have for lunch today, Ma? Today? Yeah. Oh, uh, what did I have lunch? Oh, I had the, the soup. Udon soup. Oh, yeah, the udon, what, the one that we made for a special? Yeah. yeah. Mm. That was really good. That was very yeah, it good. was very good, yeah. Mm. So, on that note, we've got some questions. Yep. Should we start answering them? Yep, sure. Um, well, do you, well, we've got a selection of questions and just things that have happened at work. Oh, okay. okay. What, what do you want to start with, a question or a thing? Um, I think we should start with a question. Okay. Um, Sandy Middlehurst would like to know, how have your eating habits changed from when you were running a Chinese takeaway to running the new restaurant? Um, they haven't changed, for me anyway. I've always... So we never... Bowl of noodles. Yeah, so we never <laughs> eat what you sell, really, because mm. um, that's... Profit. So I would never go and make myself a portion of ribs. I'd bring in ribs and make them, but I wouldn't do barbecue ribs because obviously that takes too long and I've only got like yeah. 20 <laughs> minutes to cook and eat. So mine hasn't changed at all. You, Ma? No, I don't think it had changed. Yeah. Because normally when, when you're in service, you actually don't get time to eat. Mm. So it's not as if you were... Uh, Sit yeah, so you down, don't have eat. a three course meal now. No. No. <laughs> no, no. No. So like I know you see a lot on TikTok people have um or staff have whatever the customers have. Um, but not in our kitchens. Not because we're Oh yeah, we do. Sometimes we've done the wrong order. Oh sorry, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. If it's Some yeah there, it was so many that they have to take them home, honestly. <laughs> yeah. It's a loss of profit or the most like most thing that we done it wrong is some customer requested they don't want onion and don't want this, don't want that. That is a that is a major mistake. Yeah, it, and we it's, made. Yeah, it's yeah. it like your heart sinks when you see that ticket coming yeah. as well. Yeah. You might think, oh, me just asking for no onions and no spring onions. That's 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 easy. How could that be difficult? But when you cook the same dish day in day out and it's the same you, you just a, like automatically programmed to do that yeah. yeah you could even be saying to yourself don't put onions and spring onions in guess what and you're Boom. literally saying it <laughs> as you're putting it in yeah. and you don't even notice the worst is when you you think you've done well you go to plate it up and someone goes is that a fucking onion <laughs> oh you feel like screaming <laughs> oh is that is that the vegan one? Oh, fuck. yeah yeah <laughs> Like it's just it is it is like I get when it's not busy it's actually really easy but when it is busy you kind of go into autopilot just mm. sort of focus on your job and you end up making mistakes. Luckily, even though Mum's saying some days we make loads of mistakes and and the chefs have to take the food home, that doesn't happen very often. I think the only time that's that's happened was when we already had staff lunch and no one was hungry. So they just took the leftover pad thai or mi goreng home. Yeah, or sometimes we, we just had them, you know? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes we have them when we make the mistake. <laughs> yeah, we're quite lucky. We don't normally uh, mess up very often. No. Yeah. But today... It does happen sometimes. Today was a fairly busy day, and I don't think anyone messed up, did they? No. No, not today. No. Mm. Don't say it. It might be tomorrow. Yeah, every order's going to be wrong tomorrow. <laughs> oh, God. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you want to do another one? Yeah, another question. Next one. Yeah. Um, where are you? Handmade noodles. Got my first dough sitting now. What's the best way to pull or cut for a first timer, please? And that's from Dawn. 
So if you're making first timer, what I'd do is I'd cut. It depends what dough you've met, you're making. So if you met, it was, you said pool, you've pr- probably made a pool dough. Um, one advice is always use more water than they than they say in the recipes, because most of the time they give you wrong quantity, and I don't know why. But it's water weird. is your friend when you're making pool noodles. Because like, it's the water with the flour that makes gluten. Mm. So extra water. You don't want it like sticky, so it's sticking to your hand. But it's, it's got to be fairly, it's got to be quite soft. Yeah, water. Yeah, and um, so that's one little tip. So don't be surprised if you go to pull it and it doesn't work. It's normally because they've, they've for some reason, they just give you less water. And I'm not sure if it's because they don't know how to make it and they... They pretend they know, or they just don't want people to know. I don't know. I think a lot of it's people genuinely don't know how to. Yeah, so I d- like there's only one recipe I can't remember who it's by recipe book I read where they where I looked at the recipe and thought, yeah, that would work. Um, but most of the time, I think there's not enough water. But that's for pulled um, noodles. Another tip, if you're for cutting them, is cut them into small, so like flatten it out with a rolling pin a little bit and cut it into strips and then pull the strips individually because mm. like the, if I make pulled noodles I, I pull it from the hole and I just keep going but that's 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 quite difficult to to do especially if you're new to it but if you're not making pulled noodles and you're making just almost a pasta kind of noodle um, roll it flat as flat as you can get it and just fold it over itself loads and loads and then cut it. Yeah. Or you uh, cut it to the top. Yeah. <laughs> or, or you do that and ruin your hand because tables are hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also, the trick with that kind of dough is not to overwork it because the more gluten you have in that, the harder it is to roll thin. Oh, yeah. It bounces back. Yeah, it bounces back. It? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you do not want that. Yeah. You roll it, then boom, roll. Yeah. And you want the the batter, the batter. You want the dough to almost be stretch dry. No, yeah. not stretch. Like easy to roll. Very easy to roll. Yeah. 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 Um, and I think that's about it. Or, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that is that a good answer for you? The, the, no one can. You know, people. Okay. Yeah, I'm just asking. Is uh, that a good answer for you? Yeah, comment yes if you thought no? that was a good answer. Yeah. Okay, please. <laughs> okay. Um, Ashley would like to know if you think that the rising costs are changing customers' orders. Um, that's really difficult. Not in our establishment, if I'm honest. I don't think... So we've done street food outlets for about five years now, haven't we? About nearly eight years coming. No, eight years. Um, we don't know. Yeah, I didn't notice years. the difference. Uh, from like people tend to order one main and then loads of sides, which is how you would a lot of the time do it in a the, the far east. You order like two kind of main meals and loads of sides, and everyone picks at everything. So that's exactly we haven't noticed. I haven't particularly. Have you noticed the difference in ordering? I think um, when people come in, often a lot of the time it's new customers, mm. so they buy a lot. Like if two or three people come in, they might get three to four mains, and then a couple of sides because they want to try a bit of everything. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, if anything, people over order for the amount of people. Yeah, they always get to take home though. Isn't yeah. It? Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit like us when we go out. Yeah. We could, lots, three of us yeah. go out and order for like seven people. Yeah. Yeah, we won this, and we won that, and then, oh my God, you were so full. And we <laughs> bring it back, <laughs> have it for the even dinner or the next day. Yeah. Yeah. It's no waste. But when we stopped <laughs> takeaways, so we, we actually stopped Chinese takeaways last year. Was it last year? twenty? Yeah, January 2022. Was the last time I think our oh, takeaway opened? No, November. No, d- twenty one. December. No, because we went, we switched back to street food. Couldn't oh, get yeah, the staff yeah, in yeah. Porlock, mm. so we had to close down. 
Mm. Well, I had to close down anyway, and then I just moved. Um, the but before that, we went. We were doing the. Ch- I did notice that people not sitting in when they're in the restaurant and eating, but when they were taken away, they weren't ordering rice. They only order the main. Or, yeah. yeah, and like. Even though the profit margin is good on a main, it's not brilliant. You need the sides in order to make it worth doing because the mains take seconds to do, but there's so much pre-prep you've got to do before that. So even though the the cost, the value of the goods is cheap, the cost in terms of manpower and labour, electricity and, and everything else shoots the cost up completely. So... That's what a lot of people don't really realise. Manpower is like a massive issue. Wages. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they weren't ordering uh, boiled rice or fried rice like they were before. They were just ordering mains. Or if they did order rice, it would be like a main rice. And I'm guessing they'd split that. Because yeah. I'd see like sort of like pre-COVID, people would order um, curry chow mein uh, Hong Kong style say for a family of four Hong Kong style sweet and sour whatever sweet and sour chicken balls foo young and beef and black bean arbitrary stuff and then there would always be like at least two or three fried rices Mm. now I noticed it would be all those main dishes but instead of two or three fried rices you'd have a chicken fried rice or a char siu fried rice Mm. yeah yeah (laughs) So that's that's a bit of a change. Yeah. Hope that answer your question. How did people order? Like I was a bit too young to really pay attention. Well, I was. How did people order in the eighties? Oh my god! <laughs> they definitely well down our way. They will have uh, two fire rises and there's. Two noodles, so just a plain noodles. Um, they have all the sauces, barbecue sauce, curry sauce, sweet and sour sauce. And if they order a sweet and sour chicken, and they'll have extra sauce. Not so much of the main at the time, mostly like those side dishes. Pancake roll. Really? Yeah. Because that, that's, that's a different experience for me when I, I'll, I'll let mum carry on. Yeah, carry on. Yeah, they order... Um, Two mains and a lot more, the fried rice and the noodle. And definitely got a bag of chips in every single order. Yeah. The, well, my Chips and curry sauce, yeah. So when I was, like, sort of in the kitchens about 10 or 11, that would have been, like, mid-90s, late-90s, and uh, I'd say lots more mains were bought. Yes. Especially ribs. Ribs were one of the most ordered things. A lot of chicken balls. Yes. And every order would... Chicken fried rice or chicken chow mein. Yeah. Definitely. 100% chicken fried rice or chicken chow mein with a fried rice side. Yeah. One yeah. sauce. Nobody used to really order the sauces much. Except um, curry sauce was one of the most ordered. No, it wasn't barbecue sauce was. It's just curry sauce was the most used. Yeah. yeah, sweet and sour sauce is the most ordered. <coughs> With sweet and sour chicken balls, yeah. 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 So, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. yeah. Next one. Yep. Yeah. Um, Ed would like to know why do some key dishes seem to vary so much from region to region? Do you think it's different family recipes, or using what's available, or they're just lazy? <laughs> no one is lazy, okay? Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> I wouldn't say, no, that's a good point. I wouldn't say they're lazy because the, the amount of hours they put in, there's just not the love in the food. Yeah. Because you can't be lazy and run a successful takeaway, even if the food is subpar. Mm. But um, in terms of... I think some of them are not prepared to put in the better ingredient. They're thinking about the... Bottom line, mm. but they also I think they also don't they can't tell the difference mm. because you got to remember a lot of Chinese people don't actually eat what they serve in 
their takeaways. And it's a bit different now, especially like um, if they've got kids that grow up, their kids are going to be eating the Chinese food and the takeaways like I did. But um, they themselves, who if they've come over, they haven't been born in England, they've come over from, say, China and bought a takeaway just to run it, they're not, a lot of the time they're, they don't know the standard of what it should be. So they're told, they do sort of like a, a shadowing thing for a couple of weeks or months and then they take over and then they decide how they're going to sort of run their business model, don't they? Yeah. And a lot, not a lot of the time, but sometimes they just go, okay, we're just going to do it as cheaply possible and make it as cheap as possible so we can sell it a little bit less than the guy down the road and that will up our revenue, which makes sense. But at the same time, I don't think they realise how drastically different that makes the food. Like, just, even just, I, like when I when I train someone to cook, Lydia knows, because Lydia's now actually a, a chef in our kitchen, um, just the smallest amount extra of one thing changes it completely. Like, it's yeah. such a fine balance. And that's why I also think that it's, a lot of takeaways nowadays are hit and miss because they don't know that because they're not eating the food. Well, and it's just like, <coughs> oh, I Sorry. accidentally put too much of that in or I've got to put that in. doesn't matter. Yeah. Just send it out. Yeah. But if something something isn't right where we are, we will do it again. Yeah. Because cause it's that one time you fuck up and you think, oh, it doesn't matter. It will matter. Yeah. yeah. And it, it it doesn't even though it's an extra okay ten minutes, it's worth doing it again. So it's right. Yeah, because yeah, you start sending out subpar um, food, then it screams to everyone that you don't care. Yeah, because then it's like the next time you go, oh, it's, an, it's only a little. Oh, the next time, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, do, and then before you know, it, you've just got a shit place, haven't you? Yeah. But regionally, sorry, can you, what was the whole question again? Why would you? Have you really? So, so I can. Oh, I'll go to your messages. <laughs> we've, we've, you've it's done just, this before, and like, I've said. Yeah, I know. Just put a tick next to them, or write type no, done. If you want to do it, you can do it. <laughs> um, where's it gone? Oh, um, do you think it's region to region, different family recipes, and we've covered that it's not lazy, or what's what's um uh, what? available locally to them. Uh, locally would have been sort of like years and years ago definitely nowadays like yeah. every cash and carry has the same thing so that's not really an issue anymore it's more like a personal recipe yeah, yeah. it's going to be yeah. personal recipes so it, the difference will be three things a place that's doing it f- for the business a place that is um like regional base because that does play a massive role in in the change because you like people don't realize how different one town's food is from the other and also they don't realize they don't actually realize how different what one place in their town is from the other they just get their local takeaway often and then just assume that's the right way to do it because then when they order it from the other takeaway they don't like it but forget that that's how they've done it and that's how they do it there and just assume because they like that one, that's how all the other ones do it and then completely erase the fact that that one did it differently. Mm. Um, but yeah, so it's either going to be regional, um, people doing it for just business and then the people who are passed down the business all want to keep it going. There are very, very few of those good places left, I'd say. Like, so one in sort of five is going to be not le- I call them not legacies, but... The- not in one in five. I yeah, think. probably yeah, one in ten then. Yeah. I call them legacies, but like th- they don't always have to be um, sort of passed down takeaways or parents with takeaways because there are some actual takeaways that are good who ha- they have just moved from China and they do care about what they're serving. So it's it's mainly personal, if you ask me. Yeah. Just personal preference. That's why they differ so much. Mm. Just like anything, really. Any sort yeah. of yeah. cuisine... A cuisine. Well, it's like you can go as Ramsey says it. Yeah. Yeah. Cuisine. 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 Like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's got weird. Cuisine. Cuisine. You've got 
Because it's technically a French word, isn't it? I think. Oh yeah. Maybe. So he's doing that thrithor thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I hate it when people do that. What's that? What? what is, how do people say? Well, my, da- my dad says pad thai panthis. Sate. For some reason. Sate. I'll have a sate, please. I'll, I'll do the sate. Yeah, I'll do the sate. We'll, we'll do the sate this time. Where's that R? Oh. Yeah. People, it, people do find um, find random letters in the dishes, don't they? Yeah, I think it's because I don't know why it is. Maybe uh, maybe that's how they pronounce it, isn't it? But you call it sate. Yeah, yeah but I if you pronounce it how it's spelled, it'd be sat-te. Yeah, sate. Yeah, sate. Yeah, sate. sate. Even sate. even Jangs, they say zings. Sometimes Z. Because it's, uh, Z. Because it's Z. Well, Z the Z I get, but the ings Z- I like ends. zings. Yeah, never mind. Ziangs is normally what people yeah. say, which is like I don't correct anyone because it's no. I don't. Even if they go, I hope I've said that right. I don't bother because yeah, it is good. awkward. Yeah. I don't. I actually go. It is in fact pronounced with a J instead of a Z, but I never really correct anyone unless they ask because it doesn't. Oh, I feel bad saying it when they when they go. Oh, I hope I said that right because they they look so pleased with themselves. No, I I slam them back down to ground. <laughs> <laughs> Reality check. <laughs> <laughs> so it was perfect pronunciation, don't worry. <laughs> it's because I can't, I think it's because I can't, it does annoy me a, li- a little bit, not because it's wrong pronunciation, but technically it's mum's maiden name and they're saying it wrong. So if someone asks if they're saying it right, I'm going to correct it, but I'm not going to go out my mm. way to make someone feel or a little bit belittled because of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the worst one, I'm not. I'm not sure. If you, you can say it if you want, because you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But when they say nasi goreng, oh, they say uh, that word. Yeah. N a. Don't spell it. We all know what was. N a s i. Yeah. Now imagine the s has a z and said, and they say that. Yeah. 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 They did. They didn't think that they were saying it wrong. You know. I can see why they do it because if you look down and you glance at it quickly, your mind's going to fill the gaps in and just. But I mean, if that's on your mind, it says a lot about you. Yeah, and the fact that they didn't question it either, they go, yep, that's it. Nailed it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God, no. Okay, right, let's go on to the next one. Um, Why, well, why when you post photos of the food that you cook, it looks so bloody amazing and just makes me want to cook and eat Chinese food? Why does it taste so good and leave you wanting more every single time? Jackie. First of all, is that is that Jackie as in Jackie? Yeah. Okay. Congratulations to Jackie. She yes. won the Good Food Jamie Oliver Best Number One Teacher. Could you... Could you See if you can don't don't delete. Oh, okay, fine. Um, could you find out what the award was? Because I, I want to give her a massive shout out because she uses our book. Our best uh, tuition teacher. Tuition. Tutoring. Tutoring. Food technician. Uh, tutor, food tutor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got a special name for it now. Well, we'll, we'll see because Lydia will find it. Mm. But um, yeah, she was presented it by Jamie Oliver. He surprised her. They came in. Um, well, he ca- they were in a par or par. They were in a bar. <laughs> I was going to say pub and bar, but it came up par. They were in a, a bar, and he comes and surprises her with the award. And um, she uses our books yeah. for yeah. teaching, and she teaches the students how safe MSG is. Mm. Sigma behind it. In fact, um, we did offer her, and the offer still there is for us to one day go up there and teach a lesson. Yeah. Um, or do um, I, I have offered. Before she won the award, I'm not just saying this because she won the award, I'd offered um, to do a... One-to-one. No, not one-to-one. What's it called? A Skype. Oh, Skype cookling. Yeah. Cookling. I say I offered. I, I asked someone to set it up for me, and um, it's not their fault. I completely forgot to chase it up. I should I should have just done it myself. But uh, that's why I ask people to do stuff, because I've got such a bad memory. Uh, one of the uh, Jamie Oliver's Food Educator of the Year Award. Yeah, Food Educator of the Year Award. Mm. Very, very cool. Yeah. So well yeah. done. Well done. It's actually a wonder how I get anything done, to be honest. 
Because I, I, I can't do it. I can't keep things in my head very well. Yeah, you're a bit shit at that. Yeah, I am, yeah. I literally can't focus on anything. Did you answer the question yet? I can't remember what the question was. See, <laughs> this is a great... This is why I say don't delete stuff. What is was it the? Jackie? Is that her name, Jackie? She said, we cook the food and we pour to it. She wants to eat it all the time. And what is hungry. about it that makes you want to keep going back for more? Uh, if the level of food isn't tasty. Yeah, just tasty food. I don't yeah, know if I mean, you're talking about je- Chinese takeaway um, recipes or food in general, or or our recipes. I'm going to say you're just talking about Chinese f- food in general. I, I hate to admit it, but the amount of sodium and, well, amount of salt and MSG that's in it, it makes you want to go back for more. Because mm. it's delicious. It is. Very delicious. Yeah, and the flavour is about... What's but it's that, that, it's that what, like that... That you can... Brackets, wok hay flavour. Wok hay. Oh, wok he. Um, wok he, yeah. Wok and he, yes. What? <laughs> that was... <laughs> it sounds like wok, W-A-L-K, and he. Wok he. That's not even sentence, mum. <laughs> it's just words. Anyway. Hi. Um. So, yeah, like the... The, the the fusion of that, I, I think. Mm. Plus, a, a lot of the Chinese takeaway stuff is cooked with a good amount of oil, which helps everything. Yeah. Any sort of takeaway food, you kind of want to go I keep think going back a, for more, don't you? Yeah. The high intensity of the heat, isn't it? And if you no, 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 it's not, because you can do it on the, a low heat. I know on a lower heat, but if you cook a piece of fish in the... In a in a pan, it's not very hot. And do you think that fish gonna taste nice? Yeah, but you won't put the fish in until the the pan is hot. Uh yeah, I suppose so. But a lot of some some people do put it in. Well, if you think about, it, if people are doing it at home on electric cookers and they're mm. cooking off our recipes that mm. are, they they say are exactly the same, or in mm. some cases better. And it's yeah. not the ferocious heat of a wok burner, is it? No, no, it can be over too intense. But I think it's a, f- well, it's a flavor. I mean, you definitely have to have heat. Yeah, of course. But yeah. it's just, but it's just about patience. Mm. Like you can, you can get the heat from an electric cooker. It just means you have to wait twenty minutes for the oil to heat up. Yeah. Before you throw your vegetables mm. in. No, oh, I, d- I didn't put it right then, did I? No. <laughs> Next one? No, let's see if... Or it cooked with Here love. <laughs> there we go. Definitely next one now. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Do you want a, another question or a, a situation? Let's go for a situation this time. I have a consonant, please. Okay. So um, the lady that ca- came in and got angry because she didn't order the food. Remember? Yeah. yeah. That, was, oh, that was... Do you remember... Oh, with the young kids? No. no. That we talked about that last podcast. So, the older lady. So there was a lady who came in and she she ordered something and she was saying how this is the first time she's tried us. Uh, oh, that one. She said one meal is missing, is it? Yeah, so essentially. Oh, and, the, and, so, okay. and then she started berating us for not having a phone number and says what well, real business doesn't have a phone number well try fucking phoning parcel force and getting through you're not going to get through to anyone yeah um so i just it's just we have we use parcel force so we can't get you through to anyone angry then, yeah. yeah so that's why because they're uh, they're the only ones who yeah, move on will pick up from us <laughs> so so she she did she basically just said she said we we, we don't have a real business uh, we're, we're a sham um, she's tried to get in touch with us because she was missing a dish. So then I commented back and I said, um, okay, we can sort this out. It's not an issue. Just let me know what you ordered. And she goes, I ordered for three of us and we only got two mains. I said, okay, now can you tell me what you ordered? And then and then she went and emailed us yeah. the exact same thing, um, except a little bit more... Uh, Rude, and saying, "I won't be using you again if you don't get sort this out." I can't now. I have to come in on my day off because you're closed tomorrow. 
Um, oh, no, so now I have to wait till Tuesday to sort this out because you're closed tomorrow. And I'm like, we're not, we deserve a day off, right? But mm. if, we, if we've if we messed up, we will make this right, okay? If anything, we might give you a discount as well next time just to say sorry. I didn't say that, but I was thinking it. And um, so then I asked her what was on her order and she said what she ordered. I then... Well, actually, she's ticket number. Uh, she didn't give us a ticket. No, she number. did. She said because she had the ticket there, and she was getting really weird about telling us what was on the order and what the ticket. Yeah, number she was. was. Yeah, that are you correct? And she she was being a bit um, cagey us. about it, wasn't she? Yeah. And then because she fucking realised. No, she, no, no, she said, "Oh, my order came to thirty-eight pounds and ninety-five pence, or whatever, right?" Yeah. So w- I went looking through the tickets to find that exact number at the time that she came in. Yeah. Because we were quite quiet that day because i think it was a tuesday and tuesdays is a weekday and you're lucky to be busy on a tuesday well it wouldn't have been because it's we were closed so and it was saturday. saturday and it was busy anyway i found the ticket i found the ticket because it's the only ticket that day that added up to that amount that she said she paid it was the exact amount as well yeah and and then she said roughly what she ordered so i knew what was on the ticket and then i said well, I took a photo of it and put it up underneath her comment. Pardon me. And I said, you only ordered two mains. You get a copy of this ticket. Mm. We keep a copy. And your order is read back to you. So I went in the next day, on the day off, to go back through our CCTV. And the order was read back. So it wasn't our fault. And we've probably lost a customer because... That's what is irritating for something that's not our fault. And we were actually quite nice about it until they started getting anarchy with us. Yeah. And even then, I wasn't too, um, what's the word, aggressive. I was just, I just wanted to make sure that other people who were reading this thread could see actually it wasn't our fault. And, and um, there was nothing we could have done about it. And she just got mad at us for no reason. Well, I think she got mad thinking you left it out and then was made to look like an idiot. So instead of going, oh, okay, that was my fault. Yeah, she just went quiet. Yeah. Yeah, just went absolutely quiet. Do you know what's really annoying as well? Is that if someone's been like that with us, I don't care if you come back in. I'm not going to treat you any differently. If anything, I'd just be like... Well, thank you for coming back. Yeah, thank you for trying us again. We understand that sometimes when you expect something... You can get a bit angry. Mum is a prime example of that. <laughs> Mum, tell them about your technique that you like to... Oh, no, did we talk about that yesterday on the podcast? No, that no, was we were in talking the about it today, weren't 80s, we? 80s, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, yeah. You know, you're expecting food and you don't get what you want. Um, I get it, but try and... Not be so, because it was the accusation, wasn't it? You forgot. You did this. You've done that. Yeah. Can't get hold of you. And she went on multiple posts to post exactly the same thing. Yeah. Like a There's no need for yeah. that, you know. No, it's it's, it's really spiteful. Yeah. yeah. It's nasty. Yeah, but again, she came in. I know her face. We know her name because you know Facebook. <laughs> um, we, I won't mention. We won't mention it. Just yes, of course. Like. We just act like nothing happened because at the end of the day, um, you made a mistake. Um, the mistakes happen. We don't hold grudges. Holding grudges for children. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next one. Yeah. 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 Um, do you want another QA? Or Go on, Ma. You pick. What? QA? Do you, do you want a question or a, a situation? We had a situation just now, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. what do you want? You pick uh, another situation or another QA? QA, okay. question answer. QA, nah. Okay. Uh, what's the best uh, brand for fried rice? Oh, that's, that's a difficult one. So that's I like, one. there's two brands that I, I prefer, I favour. Mum, you go first, what are yours? Mine is, uh, <coughs> I don't think... Normal customer can get the sort of rice you would like. Well, no. Unless you go to the Chinese supermarket, get a great big sack of it. Or? 
Where's or, the other place they can get? Oh, or, chin and chin. There we go. <laughs> Bloody hell! Way to miss a <laughs> chance to promote the web store. Yeah. Visit chinandchew.com for all your Chinese takeaway supplies. That was cringy. <laughs> <laughs> Visit chinandchu.com. So we sell the prefer- well, our preferred one on there. Yeah. Um, it's a, you want a lo- high quality long grain. Um, there are two that I do prefer. Mum, what do you prefer? I prefer the uh, Phoenix, Phoenix brand. Um, I actually, well, there's three in total. Tilda. Tilda. Not the... The long grain you get in the Western supermarkets. This is the long grain that comes in massive bags. But it's super expensive. And no, like Tilda was, we'd use them for Thai fragrant back in the day when we couldn't get Green Dragon for Thai fragrant. But um, yeah, I, I, I usually go between um, Phoenix Brand and Dolly Boy, Tolly Boy. Yeah, Tolly. Tolly boy. Mm. Um, Not Easy Cook or Tesco's own. No. No. Tesco, look, Tesco's. No, Easy Cook is out of the window. And someone. You will not even get a look at it. Someone's just said rice is rice. And I just. Like, no, I, I, I think they believe that. And I and then think that's. Like I said last time, I think it's just their lack of um, palate education. They, ca- they can't actually tell the difference. But what annoys me is when they say it, there's no no difference. Yeah, to you maybe, but your palate isn't as developed as someone else's, or your so palate could be more developed. It's than like someone. saying a car's a car. Yeah. But there's a massive difference in performance between a hiring car and yeah, like a BMW like a and a little uh, what is it, a Renault. Yeah. <laughs> one point one, or five hundred cc, uh, Renault Fiat. Or a Citroen, Renault Fiat. Or yeah, Citroen 500cc and compared to a 2.3 turbo engine, eh? Come on, different, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's about like, the rice is about like that as well. Low grade, high grade. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's and all to do with when it's picked, yeah. And the, the, the like, it's not just for fried rice, is it? it it's good for just boiled rice as well, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Same sort of brands. Yeah. Yeah. Thai fragrant rice is good for um, boiled slash steamed rice. Mm. Not great for yeah, fried rice fine. because it can it goes sticky. Yeah. Um, if you do use it for fried rice in, your, in a pinch, you have to add less water. Mm. But that means it's slightly undercooked in the middle and it's a bit al dente. If you like that, it's fine. Personally, I can't stand it because I hate it when oh, teeth stick together. I like my rice together. with a little bit of bite. Yeah. No. No, thank you. Mm-hmm. Not cooked properly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like it slightly raw. <laughs> That's like saying I like my jacket potato a bit raw in the middle. Yeah. Like you, oh. you just wouldn't do it, would no. you? No. Anyway, again, if you like that, then you like that, but not for us. Nope. Uh, another question? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Um, can you discuss the best way to get started in cooking Chinese food at home? It's a little bit overwhelming looking at the recipes when you've never cooked anything Chinese before, and that's from Josh. Um, oh, it's George. Josh. Yeah. He's how full. Old. Yeah. He's full. No, I don't know. No. No, he's not full. He's full blown. I don't. I don't know how old he is. I can. I can have a look. See if I can guess. I'd say, I think he's probably late twenties, early thirties. I don't know. I'm just guessing by the name Josh. To be honest. You Why, can, Mum? What does it, will it make a Josh's. difference? Yeah, it does. Oh, okay. It does, okay. Um, mid-20s, I'd say. Yeah. It looks mid-20s. Yeah. 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 Maybe late 20s. Right? No, I'd say mid-20s. Mid-20s. Yeah, maybe early 20s. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe early 20s. Very young. Mm. Well, good, good Good for him. Good for, good for yeah, you, yeah. Josh. Yeah. So you're a voice, Mum? To, to <laughs> work. To learn to cook. Yeah. What was his question? Where, if it, for a complete beginner, mm-hmm. it can be overwhelming. So where would you start? Where would you start? Firstly, start with boiled rice steam. Boiled rice steam. No, mm. boiled rice first. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get a rice cooker and start cooking your rice. Yeah, but that's not really a dish, though. No, yeah. If I mean, it's, once a, good, you can it's cook a good base, dish, though, isn't it? Yeah. You can start your dish, and then you can start with the fried rice, and then add on to your other bits. Yeah, fair one. I I, I, I think... Um, Don't straight away go crispy beef, though. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I mean, you can, fun. but you need a lot of time. <laughs> I think starting with things like fried noodles and... I was going to say chicken chow mein is the e- one yeah. of the easiest things because uh, fried rice if you're n- if you're not if you're using a non-stick it's really easy if you're using a carbon steel seasoned wok even if it's really really well seasoned rice can sometimes stick to it and, you, and it's difficult to sort of handle that if you don't know what you're doing it's yeah. also also good to get a good like sort of base set of ingredients, like the essential kit we do sell yeah. on the Chin and Chew website. Let's plug it. Yeah, yep. it well, like just to have sort of your your basic a starter pack. Then yeah. that's the best one. Then yeah, and we and the stuff in there is the actual stuff the takeaways are using. And brands, that's another thing. Brands make a massive difference. Don't mm. go to your Chinese supermarket, uh, the, your Western supermarket, and use the soy sauce off their shelves because even if it's the same brand that's sold in the Chinese supermarkets the contents of those bottles not all the time but 90 to 80 to 90 percent of the time are completely different Mm. so you get so the western side is slightly watered down because they think it's for the western palette which i reckon 10 years ago yeah correct Uh, nowadays people are a bit more educated um, and want the actual flavor and stuff like that so I think that's why there's there's that difference, but yeah, yeah. We, Josh, we sit our web store, get the beginner pack. There's and don't forget to let us know how you get on with it, okay? Thank yeah, you. and we do we do have a cookbook as well. <laughs> yeah, so you might want to purchase that and one on its way, a second one. Yes. Yeah, and I was writing the third one. Well. One of the third ones, because I've got three of them writing at one time today. And um, what was the one I was doing today? Choose staff lunches. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be a good one, Matt. Yeah, it is going to be a good one. I'm actually really enjoying it. But don't get me wrong, they're mum's recipes. I'm just writing them down. Yeah. So, um, also, in actual terms of cooking, sharp knife is really important. Blunt knives are more dangerous okay. than a sharp knife. Sharp knife? Sharp knife. Um, and, yeah, like Lydia said, something like a chicken chow mein, I think is a good starting point. Or actually, the easiest thing you can do is um, a really easy sweet and sour recipe, which is, well, there is one on our TikTok. I, I won't be able to link it here for you, but maybe if it's on YouTube and you're watching it, on YouTube, I'll put the link for that below. And chicken balls, because they are very, very easy to do. Mm. You just, again, need the right flour and um, just the knowledge on how to do it, which I'll link a video below. That's a really good starting point, because then you can have sweet and sour sauce with a really easy, simple egg fried rice that you've made from the the advice mum has given you about using a rice cooker. And then you, you then got literally fried rice and... Sweet and sour chicken balls, and you can play about with the fried rice, then adding what you want to it, changing flavours up, adding garlic, figuring out when you like the garlic added. Most people, most good chefs will add the garlic to the rice and not to the pan. If you look, go on TikTok, I can instantly tell if someone's a good chef or not because they've added the garlic when they're doing a fried rice to the fried r- the rice in the pan and not directly on the heat because that will burn your garlic. And I said that I said that first about what six seven years ago no five five six years ago on YouTube and I got absolutely because back then we were tiny right and I got absolutely torn apart for saying that and then nowadays loads of Chinese chefs are on TikTok now and they are literally doing it as I say it and to all those people who said who were on my back about a hundred percent now you're like oh I, I've always done that fuck off have you. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I do. I mean, I, I'm not just saying this because if it wasn't true, I wouldn't bother saying it. But I do notice now a lot 
of like TikTok chefs and like YouTube cook people do do a lot of the things now that you that do. We were doing before. Yeah. What's like, more, what's it's popular now to do it certain ways. And all of a sudden, these things do matter if you do it this way or that way. And people go, oh, yes, yes, oh, yeah. But when I was teaching people to do it, people, they, oh, I just got endless abuse. Yeah, it's like you Uncle Roger. Yeah. yeah. You were around before Uncle Roger, well, but I, everyone listens to the comedian over the actual chef. Well, what, what I find <laughs> ridiculous, I remember looking at Uncle Roger's account before um, he, he blew up, right? And before he did the... Um, because I knew about him before, because I can't remember what it was. He was on something. Anyway, I knew about him, and I went to look on his uh, um, YouTube. He might have already done it there by then, but um, I didn't know about the BBC React thing. And he only had 7,200 subscribers, mm. and we were on 45,000 subscribers. And then literally overnight, I saw him jump from 7,000 7, to, to like a million, a million. Mm. I was like, what? It's amazing what you can do when you put on a fake accent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I well, I can also speak like that. <laughs> well, you just spoke normally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I can speak like that as well if you want me to. <laughs> okay, okay, you just... Go on then. <laughs> what? On, speak speak like that then. Speak my Chinglish. <laughs> yeah, go on. How are you today? How are you to die? No, that was terrible. No. I will never do that again. I apologise. <laughs> the thing is, I'm normally quite good at that accent. Well, you think you are, but... Well, you think you are. You are not ah. Uh. It's the ah. Uh, yeah. It's the bounciness in the voice. Yeah. yeah. yeah come on, now. Give some more question and answer. La. We yeah. want to listen. La. <laughs> okay. Right. Um. yeah. Uh, come on. Give us a question and answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> James would like to know about the Chinese takeaway secret menu and what are the dishes commonly requested by Chinese natives that many of us are missing out on so there is no secret menu um, people say this all the time it's not a secret it's just they, 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 it's not a thing anymore either so back in the day like Chinese restaurants that had dim sum or Chinese restaurants that served, or takeaways that served dim sum, or that that kind of food, mm. would save th that menu for the Chinese people because they know that they wanted the actual Chinese food, which is dim sum is just steamed, mainly steamed and and deep fried a lot of it. But I it's, think during that time, a lot of the Western they wouldn't have liked it. They wouldn't have. So yeah, they haven't experienced it, haven't seen it. They say, "What the hell is this thing steam?" Yeah, then so yeah. looking up at you. Yeah, so it was never secret menu. It's just they, they didn't never want it because it was like <laughs> disgusting and weird. Yeah, so they never offered it, and nowadays it's not a thing. So like, you go to a Chinese restaurant now, um, they just leave all the menus out. But when I was oh. younger, I remember um, if a Westerners sat down, they'd take away some some of the menus. Yeah, steak. <laughs> like, steak. Yeah, yeah. The, steak. They'll, they'll keep the menu that has the sweet and sour Hong Kong style on the, the chicken chow mein and stuff like that, and then they'll take away the dim sum menu. Um, and it's not a secret menu; it's just uh, at the time people didn't like it. So if you walked into your, so uh, most takeaways won't have a secret menu, a secret menu because they don't offer dim sum at all. So if you walked into, if I walked into my local takeaway down there. And I asked them for tassel sole or something or how 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 or something like that. They'll just look at me and go, "We we don't we don't fucking do that." Yeah. What are you insane? This is a tiny kitchen. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not a secret menu. It, that's what it is. Having said that, though, I do know abroad, they still do have a secret menu. So a Westerner comes in, they'll offer them a certain menu, and a, a Chinese person or someone speaking Chinese comes in, um, and they will hand them. All the menus, not just mm. the uh, the or the westernized version. Mm. That does happen abroad, especially Hong Kong. Um, maybe not now, to be honest, but definitely five, six years ago would have been um, mm. Singapore. No, well, Singapore is very different. Singapore doesn't really have many Restaurant, restaurants. Like it's more it's a big store. Eatery, yeah, it? like <laughs> so. I hope that answers your question. There's no real secret, but don't worry, you're not being um, 
well, duped or anything. If you go walk in somewhere and you think and you see something that looks like it could be something you've never seen on a menu, ask if they have a dim sum menu and they'll give you that. It might be written in Chinese, but 99% of the time they're more than happy to tell you what's on it. Yeah. And even if you just like tick off a load of things, it's going to be good anyway. Well, it depends because some like textures are completely different from what you're used to and a lot of it is but like much more soft than you'd expect it to be. Um, yeah, but you're weird with texture. Though. There's a, a lot more sort of shrimpy fish flavors and stuff that you wouldn't expect that to be in. Um, like salted fish, um, chicken feet. Yeah, belly pork fat. Um, yeah, just the fat. Trotto. Um, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So. Um, yeah, no Chinese. Mi- I hope that clears that up. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was a good question. When you asked that, I thought that's a really, really good question. Um, last question. Yep. How do you make rice and eggs? What, Paul? Right, no. So I'm trying to <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm trying something because I put up a post, and I said, "Can you give us some food-related questions?" So naturally, someone's going to ask if, uh, for a recipe. And I normally go, I don't do recipes on the podcast because I think it's a bit, it's going to be boring for a lot of people to hear. Mm. But I thought this time I'll give it a go and see how it works. So it's important if you like this that you comment somehow. I don't know how you would do it on Spotify or you find a way to let us know that you liked it because if it's silent, I will not be doing it again because I, I, I don't think that it works well in this kind of format. So essentially what I posted was literally what we would have for breakfast or lunch and it's essentially just boiled rice and fried eggs. So you make your boiled rice. From the rice cooker. From the rice cooker. You put it into a bowl. You season it with light and dark soy sauce. A good amount of light as a, just a splash of dark. Put your eggs on top. Fried eggs. Yeah, yeah, so that so fry your eggs. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> fry your eggs however you like them, but we like them crispy, so we normally wait for the oil to get really hot, throw in the eggs, turn off the heat, and let the heat residual heat cook the egg through. Put it onto the rice. Um, garnish with more light and dark soy sauce, crispy fried onions, and chili flakes. Yes, or fresh cut chili. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I think I had fresh cut. Chili, you did so have fresh cut chili, yeah. yeah. You also had a few chives on there as well. <laughs> and and garnish with some chives. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, and maybe some crispy um some crispy spring onion. Crispy spring onion, yeah, you could do that. It was just what you do is just finally chop up spring onions. And then and then maybe get some spam. Oh yeah. Yeah, that well, that's oh, utang that well then, spam. isn't it? Yeah. Some chopped cucumber in there. Yeah, yes. completely completely different recipe. Did I have cucumber today? No. <laughs> no. So I'm just building on your your very bland <laughs> recipe. It's not bland. It's boring. No, it is. it is like it looks like some people look at it and go, "What kind of lunch is that? That's ridiculous." But until you've had it, with all those little flavors going on in there, and that crispy egg, and when the egg yolk pops over the oh, yeah, it's like I remember. Mm. So we used to have someone work for us. His name was Jed, and he's a bit of a foodie, and he he know he knows what he likes. And um, he was what he goes. What are you doing? I said, "Well, I'm, I'm eating. What are you doing?" Uh, he goes, "No, I mean, why, why are you eating that?" I said, "Well, because it's delicious." He goes, "No, it's not." I said, "Yes, it is." He went, "No, it's not." I said, "Yes, it is." No, it's not. I was waiting for you to tell me to shut up, then, but you didn't do it <laughs> anyway. Um, so that went back and forwards like that. I made him it, and he just looked at me and goes. What is this sorcery? <laughs> like, you really don't understand how satisfying fried eggs on rice is. It's so good. The amount of people... We put fried eggs on a lot of our street food, especially with rice, because you use the yolk as a sauce, like you would for a carbonara. You use uh, yolks for the sauce. And the amount of people go, oh, that's a bit weird, and then yeah, come I, back. I don't want the fried egg, thank yeah. you. So we don't, we don't do table service, so... Uh, we just we do bring food out and then we just leave you to it. Um, the amount of people that come back to the counter and go, that fried egg is is 
inspired. Like, well, that's just what Asians have done for... You get people going, can I I have two eggs, please? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But the first time people go, oh, that's odd, that's odd. Okay, to you it is odd. I understand that. But give it a go. And even so, someone goes, I normally hate fried eggs. And the best one is when someone goes, I normally hate cucumber, but you're right, it works with this kind of food. Yeah, just that flavour when it like heats up and it's on the... like Even when you get a bit of rice that has touched the cucumber. Yeah, you can taste it, yeah. It's, mm, it's refreshing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's really good. So, I think that's everything. Yes. Is it? For today. Yeah, was, I yeah. thought there was one more thing on your list. Uh, the, the weird two-day old chicken, man. Are we going to leave it next time? We'll leave you on that cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> next time, two day old chicken man. Yeah. <laughs> so stay tuned because it's actually quite a good story, and I'm <laughs> and I'm really excited to swear a lot at that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, thank you for for watching, listening, whatever platform you're on, Spotify, Podbean, YouTube. Very, 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 very. Thank you. That doesn't make sense, but very thank you. I'm saying it again. Oh my god. Thank you very much. There we go. For um, watching us. Yes, yes, and listening. And hit the like buttons and comments. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Take care, Ma. Bye. 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 You right, Ma? Yeah? <laughs> Say happy cooking, happy eating. Happy cooking, happy eating. <laughs> there we go. Take care. <laughs>